Welcome back to the Star Wars News Net channel. My name is Tyler, joined with Luke on this Monday. My good friend, Mr. Luke Sheehan. We have a lot to talk about here because D23 was this weekend. And if you can believe it, we have not one, not two, but three trailers to discuss now because of the idiotic and absolute ridiculous reasons of hiding all of these things behind the paywall of d23 many people haven't seen it or uh, have only watched like the two of us have on the little tiny uh grainy recording of someone else having done it so i just want to say to everyone uh who is frustrated by this that i am 100 with you it is absolutely ridiculous that uh, Disney doesn't just release these little things that they're showing when uh, they do them. Like if Luke, if they at Star Wars Celebration told you when you're buying your tickets that you would be seeing these trailers and everything, but also you knew that these trailers would be available anyway, wouldn't you still want to go to Star Wars Celebration? Like does them, if they were to release something, publicly does that limit your excitement to actually go to star wars celebration i can't speak for other people but i know for myself i don't get the hype from seeing something that no one else does i get the hype from being with a bunch of other people seeing this thing being in exactly. a room like a stadium full of people watching the andor season two trailer or watching the mando and grogu trailer like that is what is exciting being around a mm -hmm. bunch of people who are also excited with you i don't think there's much to i I just don't get much from like exclusivity. Like, Ooh, I got to see it and you didn't. That makes me so happy. Right. Not a thing for me. <laughs> so I don't, I don't understand why this is a thing. Like I really don't get it. Sorry. Something is noise in my room. <laughs> it's really weird. Um, so I, but I really don't understand why we're doing this because I'm with you. Like it's all about the community. It's about this communal aspect of doing things together. And if we were to just go ahead and release these things to the public, I can't imagine people saying, well, guess I can't go to Star Wars Celebration anymore because there's plenty of people that go to Celebration and don't get into those panels. Like, you go exactly. for the community of Star Wars or D23. You're going for just the fun of being at these expos and hearing different things and being around other fans. Don't get it. Don't think it's going to change anytime soon. But with that being said, we are going to break down the Skeleton Crew, the Mando and Grogu trailer, and the Andor Season 2 trailer. We'll start with the Mando and Grogu trailer here in a moment, but I want to say welcome in everyone to the Star Wars News Net channel. I have, you know, like I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to share any of the like video from those two trailers. One, because I'm not going to put a grainy image on the screen or anything like that. And two, uh, I don't want this video uh, to be taken down by Disney uh, whenever it's they probably, inevitably... It's probably worth saying that was probably, you know, the recordings that we've seen are like illegally recorded. So whatever <laughs> like, that's worth. Think about the brave souls who recorded <laughs> those. Know. And I hope that they were using like a burner accounts or whatever. So they're not being, you know... And they're not sending the IMF, uh, you know, impossible mission force and Ethan Hunt um, after them to try to retrieve the, the files. So let's get into this. Let's have a good time. And we are going to start with the Mandalorian and Grogu trailer. Luke, we on Thursday talked about the things that we expected to see that we wanted to see. And when it came to this film, all of us were on board saying that we thought we were going to get some updates for this, but because they've only been shooting for a few weeks, there was no way we would see uh, any like footage from this. Maybe, you know, some principal photography, a couple of shots, you know, here or there, some stills, or they would announce more of the cast that would be a part of this. Instead, they gave us a full-fledged teaser trailer to hype us up, and this movie's two years away, so there's definitely going to be another trailer of some kind released, I would imagine, at Star Wars Celebration next year. So, Luke, um, just in a nutshell, how surprised were you that we got this little teaser trailer for Mando and Grogu? And also, like, how excited were you to even see that? Um, I think it's worth noting that... I. 
I think it's about roughly, roughly half of that sizzle reel that we got was like season one, two, and three right. footage. And then, you know, half of it was some new stuff. So, I mean, it wasn't full of new stuff, but still, um, it, it did pique my interest. It gave, got me to going, you know, it's been over a year since we've been with these characters. It's, it's creeping up on me that like, you know what, I'm kind of coming back around on these guys. And especially in two years, I'm really going to be, mm-hmm. I'm really going to be ready for this. And so that's just from a general sense of my relationship with the characters in the show. This sizzle reel was pretty good. I thought, I mean, we got some cool, um, this cool scene where Mando and Grogu are on this ATRT going oh, we'll down. Talk this about it. Bang. Like this, there's some cool stuff in there. So, um, it got me pretty hyped. It looked like mm-hmm. there's going to be some, promising stuff right and i just want i want to say though that i was really surprised that we got anything and the fact that they put half of it as seasons like one two three filler like kind of setting the stage for the story that's that's in there for two reasons one for the people that you know maybe for i don't know if anyone at d23 in that room hadn't seen the mandalorian but that's there for people who haven't seen the mandalorian and two they've only been filming for a couple of weeks like a few weeks so yeah they're really much to share so they've clearly been busy before we get into no let's get into the trailer first because i have some bad like stuff that i want to talk about but i want to talk about some positives first and i really did enjoy this trailer for two reasons one i think that like you said we're we've gone a year without these characters and i miss these characters but i'm not like craving their return because i'm pretty content right now but i was just thinking about where i'm gonna be two years from now and i'm really gonna be excited to see mando and grogu and to have them big screen knowing we're going to get this full-fledged lucasfilm marketing campaign for star wars mandalorian and grogu the return to theaters for star wars that just has me incredibly excited and two it's impossible to know the direction that this film is going to take based off of what they showed however what they did show was an action-packed sequence full of just you know father son going on and you know taking down some imperial scum and frankly that's all this movie really needs to be is tell this really fun story that has you know some depth to it between these two characters really build into their relationship help them grow together and as individuals against the empire in an action-packed kind of star wars thriller and that seems to be the little 30 seconds that we got on that trajectory i think it along those same lines like it feels pretty good to see them kind of know what they need to be doing like they're not giving us something that isn't gonna work like like you said this needs to be just like a little not a little but like a father and son type of thing where they're getting together they're kicking butt and they're going on father-son adventure around the galaxy like mando is like what it really is at its core and so they seems like in this 30 seconds we got they're going to keep it true to what the Mandalorian is. Mm-hmm. And I think they're going to give us something that is is really going to be a good return for Star Wars back to the theaters. And what's what's wonderful, too, that I, I laughed out loud when I watched this the first time was because when Mando says, now that I've taken him on as my apprentice and pretty much adopted him as my own, I'm going to be much more selective in my assignments. And the next shot is he's literally got in an imperial fortress of some kind shooting and breaking in and he's got grogu crawling through the vents you know and infiltrating the facility so i gotta be a lot more selective in my assignments all right we're going to go for the imperial base how does that yeah. sound <laughs> <laughs> just crazy and they had some enzelins in there too with uh grogu who's climbing through the thing so hey they're back they were in season were they- three that in the ventilation shaft that looked like almost like they were in some sort of like mini like his little maybe his little mini cockpit in the uh the m1 that you know i don't remember what it's what they called it for yeah Mando, his yeah modified the m1. M1. they were all hey two anzellans which are you know the babu fricks for mm-hmm. those who don't know and uh groger were chilling in some pipe so <laughs> looks need to get more bad baby i can't do that bobby <laughs> freak but 
uh that was that was my favorite that that episode of season three was so was so funny and so moving on to more of like what happens here in the trailer we see just a lot of mando just kicking ass in this trailer i don't know how many imperials he downs here but it's a lot from the blaster fire to the kicks probably he's only kicking people because his whistling birds that are extremely rare he's probably unleashed another five thousand salvos of that uh already and I did love the snowtrooper looks that we got. I've always loved the ways they have like the snowtrooper designs. I've always really liked those. So being on this snowy planet, which I hope is a brand new planet. I hope we have this brand new snowy planet and they keep it separate from things. I ho- I really do. If it's not, if it's like connected to something, yeah, I'm sure I'll come around. But I, I hope it's like a new snowy planet. Uh, and what do you think? Just seeing like different snow troopers and Mando just going through, waylaying, putting most of them to to rest. Um, I loved it because I mean, that's what Mando is. Like that's what he's. The first scene of the first episode of the show is him busting down a door, taking a bounty. And just like not answering to anyone. Um, so it felt good to see him really in his element and also being such a like nerd that I am. I'm like, oh, snow troopers. We haven't seen that variation since like 1980. Like they haven't used that mm-hmm. again since like Hoth in 1980 right. Empire Strikes Back. So I was like, cool, we're returning to that. Bring them back. Mm-hmm. And as far as like the snow planet, I saw, I can't claim this as my own, but I saw someone saying like, hmm, the planet where Crosshair goes. And kind of like has his turn on the empire there. I was like, mm-hmm. maybe that's the planet, but it doesn't have to be that at all. I was like, well, if they're going to connect it to something, it might. That, was that planet that even one. named in the Bad Batch? Like, I don't even know if that planet was named. I think he was just got his next assignment and he's just chilling there. Maybe, maybe it Probably. is, but I, I, don't, I wouldn't. Who knows? Not expecting. Let's, let's any go for a new planet. Connection. Let's go for something new. <laughs> I'm not I'm not expecting a bad bash connection in the Mando I am not either. I'm not expecting a movie. It. Uh but you mentioned the ATRT scene at the end and that was I have to admit that this trailer did a good job of not really giving me any idea of what the story is going to be other than just Mando Grugu, you know, hanging out doing their missions but still getting me excited just because you got Mando riding down this ATRT down a like a mountain, and Grogu's just you know every time he, this kid is in danger, he's just vibing like he's like let's go. It's like a roller coaster ride. He he thinks he's at Disney, like he thinks he's at Disney World or Disneyland doing this, and like everything's gonna be okay. And then when they land on the base, and there's just two AT ATs uh, just chilling there. And what did you think? as like this little closing thing right there before we got to the end selling moment with the ATATs and Amanda Grogu. I love that. The, you know, that comment of they go through the most harrowing, harrowing things in the galaxy. And Grogu's like, this is fun to me, actually. Sorry. Um, like when they're in a dog fight and he's just like, Yay! he's like, yeah, he's just you cheering. Might die and get <laughs> vaporized in about three seconds, <laughs> but he's going to have a good so time confident. doing it. He's so um, confident in dad. Like that's the ultimate, like my dad is a superhero. Yeah. Also, I don't, it might be a revenge of the Sith thing, but I don't really remember ATRTs being in like live action much really. So, I mean, that's cool. It kind of feels like something you pulled from mm-hmm. clone wars or video games and stuff. So it's really just cool to see that mm-hmm. vehicle make it on screen. So it's, it's cool to put, pick that up. Um, but also like the stakes are seem to be, decently high with two AT ATs that are like, you do not mess around with those things and they're firing on you. Like this is going to be something pretty substantial. This is going to be pretty serious. So, and, and they've only been filming for a few weeks. So I'm really curious as to like, what is this movie going to be? If this is just a few weeks of filming and you have this now, I need to double check this, but I think there is like these rumors going around that Pedro Pascal was there for a little bit or he was like in like on set or was at least in like hollywood like their pine not pine uh their place over over there where i forget in california what it's called all of a sudden but uh where they are filming a lot of this because favreau's like i want to eat at my same spots every day i'm not traveling around the world to film something but there was like a report that pedro was there and so a lot of people are running with that saying oh he's took 
scenes. He's, you know, they filmed scenes with him with his helmet off and that's already been done. And so I'm really curious if that's true. I, I feel like we'll get a few more tidbits about that over the next few months as we, we as if there are some leaks or some things get out. I really, really hope that we get Pedro without his helmet off uh, in this movie, like with his helmet off, because I just feel like one, Pedro Pascal would want to be physically seen in a Star Wars, his first ever Star Wars movie. And two, I know that Mando with it on is just awesome, but I feel like every person that I talk to, anecdotally speaking, would say that when he takes his helmet off, those are like the top moments in the show is when he removes his helmet for those big moments. So I'm hoping that they've already kind of figured everything out and they filmed maybe that big climactic emotional moment with Pedro's helmet off already. And that's already done in the books. And then they, he can just record his lines wherever at this point. I'm hoping so too, because yeah, I just, I can echo that wholeheartedly that anyone I talk to, I know for myself, it's true that, you know, end of season one, he's so injured. He has to take the mask off uh, season two. He, he can only get the coordinates to the light cruiser by taking his helmet off. Like there's these My favorite moment in the poignant, series. Yeah. Extremely poignant moments where you get the guy behind the mask, like the real facial expressions that are, that you just don't, you just could never replicate that with a mask. Mm -hmm. Um, so and I, I like Pedro Pascal, so I want him to be in this movie. I want him to who doesn't? be like who seen. doesn't, right? I know, like he's such a good guy. He's he's a great actor. Not? So like I really want him to be in there. Um, as far as like, would you want to see that him, his face in a trailer, or would you want to save that for the no, movie? No, not at all. I save would, it for a movie. If, if they show his face in a trailer, I will. I will be so upset. No, I okay. I will be furious because okay. you didn't. You're not going to show his face in all of season three, but you're going to put it in a trailer to get people excited. You don't need Pedro Pascal's face to get people excited for this movie. Okay. People True. like, Oh, like you can have him there, have him literally just walking around with Grogu in his arms for every single press event, every single red carpet, just really play into that. And then maybe he, if he's doing all of this stuff and doing all of that, then you know, he's probably going to take his mask off of the movie. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's all I need to know. I just want to go in. I don't want to go in knowing for sure. I want to go in thinking I know for sure. And then if it happening, like being really excited, if you show me something like that in the trailer, it, it's honest. Oh, I would be so upset. Like we would, we would have an entire podcast on why that's <laughs> it's honestly That makes sense. Do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing him in the movie. I, I'm just going to say that it's going to happen right now, and I'm looking forward to it. So we're here at the 18-minute mark-ish, and I need to bring up some bad things, okay? This is going to be fair. the... I figured I'm there was the coming around. It'll be the Debbie Downer here. I the, have... The realism part. This is... Maybe I'm just being a bit uh, negative too much like maybe being too negative but i feel like they were pressured favreau was pressured maybe feloni too to put out a little to create some sort of like quick teaser trailer just whip something together to get people excited because of behind the scenes delays going on with the ray movie and how it seems like that production is getting pushed back more and more that the scripts aren't being done. Steven Knight's doing Peaky Blinders right now that a lot of things that were supposed to already be in the motion for that are really put on hold or delayed significantly. And they were trying to avoid any sort of bad publicity when it comes to star Wars films right now, given the horrible spotty track records of the last, you know, six, seven years. And so with that being said, I think they were like, we need to get something that will distract from this. Like, cause I don't think I've heard any major talks out of the weekend of can't believe we didn't get any Ray movie news there. It's out there, but a lot of it is like, Oh my goodness, this Mando Grogu trailer, this and that. And I think they kind of slid that under the rug. So they don't have to talk about it right now and hope I would guess that by star Wars celebration next year, they have a lot of substantive 
you know, stuff that they can discuss. But it just feels weird that they're still holding that December 26th date down for a Star Wars movie, but there's not even talks of a script being finalized for any other Star Wars movie other than Mando and Grogu. Exactly. And we're quickly approaching the end of 2024, running out of months in this year quicker than we are. Um, and so like, you got to get, it's getting like almost to crunch time where you're going to, you know, by celebration of next year, um, you're going to want to have like a trailer ready to go. It's going to be a year out. You're, you should be able to have something pretty mm -hmm. easily whipped up by then. Um, and as far as Mando and Grogu, I do think that what they did with D23 and getting that out, I do think it successfully swept under the rug of Ray stuff. Nobody, I haven't really seen people up in arms not getting anything about that. But um, also it does, just what we got to see for the Mando and Grogu thing, it does say to me like, oh, we kind of rushed to get this out. There's a lot of already used, you know, scenes in this from seasons one, two, and three, like half of it was. I so mean, they've been it, filming for what three weeks, maybe something like that. It's been yeah. very it's kind of quick, impressive, you know, like what turnaround. we got that since they've you know only been going for less than a month. Like they, that is impressive, but but they've been busy, and it makes yeah. me excited for what else you know they have to film and everything. I'm really really looking forward uh, to seeing yeah, what else exactly. they, they have yeah. in store for us. If that you know is what they're releasing two years prior to the film being released, but it, it did make me upset. We didn't even get news on this but you know i know that incredibles 3 is coming out in 2028 or whatever so anyway <laughs> that's just a story for another day uh let's move on there was a, another star wars trailer uh that was released this weekend and that was the skeleton crew trailer where we got to know some of these favorite little kiddos of ours and i want to start by talking uh about our good friend Neil. Uh, what's Neil's species again, Luke? He is an Ortolan. 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 Yes, of course. An Ortolan. I, I have did not to say, have that prepped. I had to actually pull that from the folders inside my head. Dang. Yes, the archives are complete. <laughs> so I have to say this. I'm going on record right now. I will give my life for Neil. Like I <laughs> will protect this kid at all costs. This Ortolan. I will, yeah. I I will, I will, I stand Neil. I am on, I am for Neil. I am pro Neil. I am on Neil's side. There's nothing I would not do for young Neil. The other three kids, we'll see. Like, we'll see. Neil, I will go to war for Neil. I will go to war for him. He's so, he already just looks so like innocent, unassuming. And like, he kind of just doesn't know what's going on. It's like Wim mm -hmm. who's talking to him like, don't you want to like see the greater galaxy? And he's like, huh? <laughs> don't we have he's homework? Just... Yeah, exactly. He's the, he's, he's that like, kid. He's just so sweet. It's like, don't you want to know what's out there? And they're riding the bus to school and the trailer and everything. So it looks like Neil and Wim are like kind of like two buddies, like they're two buddies. And it looks like I think Fern and KB are yeah. kind of, they're like kind of buddies too. And like they're like in this little group. Or something? I don't know. But yeah. And they're like in the, they're these pairs. And I will say that Wim, it seems like he's like the leader of the group or the, the instigator, the one that says, Hey, we need to, we need to go on these adventures. Don't you want to see what's out in the world? As he's, what is the creature when he opened the trailer and a little pad that he has, there's the Jedi holding the green lightsaber and there's just like giant beast over it in this little drawing, almost like the star Wars version of a comic book, I guess, or a star yeah, Wars animated. That was really something. interesting. Uh, and so like, what, what creature was that? Because I was thinking to myself, that looks horrifying. I don't think the Jedi survived that encounter. Yeah. I'm going to guess not. That was a <laughs> towering over the Jedi. And like, that's a really good point. It looked like a, an in-universe comic book. That's really <laughs> interesting. That was really cool. What were your initial takeaways from the trailer? I thought this, you know, and I thought this about the Acolyte going in too, but um, I thought this looked really good. I, I really liked the cinematography. I thought it looked clean and it looked pretty mm -hmm. solid um, already with like the ship flying past the camera and kind mm -hmm. of just the panning of the camera and stuff like it looks pretty well done so you know it's 
it seems like it's on the right footing so far. They at least picked out the good shots to show us in the trailer, at least if there's right. not going to be all the way through. Um, but it's got me hyped for it. Really? It's uh, really, it, it, it does. It looks like a good little, you know, story about the kids getting lost and having mm-hmm. to get found. So um, I'm kind of on board with it. I, I know there's not much to go on and it could be a total flop, but it looks good to me. I'm kind of bought in for it. It looks like a fun okay. story that we're going to get. Now, obviously, the target audience for this is not like me necessarily. Uh, so right. I don't want to. I'm not going to trash a show that is not necessarily intended for me either. You know what I'm talking about? And I'm not I'm not trying to hate on Skeleton Crew. I actually enjoyed the trailer for what it was. It's just nothing. It yeah. wasn't anything groundbreaking for me. Like I didn't oh, leave yeah. that trailer going. Oh my gosh, I'm counting down the days till December 3rd. Yeah, but that's fair. At the, but at the same time, it it looks really well done. And it seems like a very fun story to get immersed in of just some kids getting lost in the galaxy. Like who we we were both Star Wars fans growing up, and Star Wars meant like the world to both of us as as kids. So Thinking back as a kid, how many times were you playing with a Star Wars action figure or a Star Wars game, just dreaming of getting lost in a Star Wars adventure as a kid? Like for me, it was like all the time. And so being able to watch a show where these kids are, you know, experiencing something like like that, I think will be will be kind of fun. Jude Law at the end was was a nice sight. I have been a renowned Jude Law hater i guess i was gonna uh, say yeah throughout throughout our time and i feel like that's a bit overblown because i i like jude law i just don't love jude law so uh, i don't want to you know get burned at the stake for that what i think is funny is that is your stance and you've made that a couple times on this show at least and we have also jay who joins us sometimes and he one of these past weeks was like you know i'm like a huge fan of jude law and i was like of course you are jay (laughs) yeah but uh his his reveal at the very end he's um got those keys he's force pulling toward him as they're in a cell and supposedly we're led to believe supposedly we are led to believe this something's going on with the force here and so his Mm -hmm. what i'm getting at is like he reveals himself he's got this cowl on he takes (laughs) off his hood and it was like it was like the most dramatic hood (laughs) reveal he like gets into it like he i was like we're doing a little bit too much there it's like he was ready for his moment he just he really was i judah was... come to save the children jod nawood <laughs> how many cool aliens were in that trailer i saw what is the name okay so there were a couple people who you know listened to timeline show or no this when, when i think it was the timeline show from last week who reached out to me and said, Hey, uh, hopefully Luke does not uh, slip up in a, in a, in a guessing of, you know, a creature or a species. So let's make sure that you nail this. Do you know the name of like the wolf creature from like the Clone Wars, like 2d thing? I saw, I don't remember the name, but they're like the, I saw the pirate with the, he's the wolf features. And he's got dual blasters. And I believe that guy is a Shistavanin. Shastavanin? Yes. Oh, um, man, I love I that. Think, I want a Shastavanin action figure now. I think there's been... W- w- the only reason I even know that is because I think there was one in the High Republic super like mentioned once as like a passing thing. So like I looked it okay. up and was like... Because I, I knew there was the clone, like 2D Clone Wars thing, I think. Right, yeah. Shastavanin. So this is, it'd be cool to see that. Obviously, what is this creature? And I don't expect you to know this one because I didn't know this creature was a thing. It was the one they saw that looked kind of like an owl that was with arm, but the owl turned and looked at him like a sentient alien owl type creature. Uh, yeah, we, that one that, that, uh... that one might just be a new species to Star Wars because I was not. It just looks it looks exactly like an owl. So I don't I don't know what that one is. I was trying to think of some sort of owl pun to make, and I, I honestly I couldn't. Who think of is that? Yeah, not beyond other than that. I was trying to think of one other than like who could See, that, that be? one really got my head turning. Oh <laughs> that was good. So good. 
I should have got that. I'm not good with puns. This is why I, I leave that to you. But this looks like a fun adventure. Uh, I really like the little droid that they uncovered in the trailer. They're going to hyperspace. There was the shot of the X-Wings coming in. And I think mm. it's going to be fun to figure out why these pirates are after the kids. Like, do, is it because the kids are like one of them they're like valuable like children in terms of they can turn them a big ransom because of who they are or do they find like some sort of valuable artifact and they're on the run trying to get home and they have some artifact or something extremely valuable and the pirates want it you know to cash in and jude law is going to protect them like but i'm really excited to see what that looks like but it would be really cool to see some you know, kids on the run from some pirates. So not married to this, but this is my take on it. They yeah. find this old Jedi temple um, as they're wondering about, and I think probably their home planet. I think they find kind of like a ship inside there and they take off, not knowing accidentally take off, not knowing what they mm -hmm. even are in. And that's what is so valuable to these pirates who are like, Oh, that's super old, super valuable. We need that. We're going to cash in on that. And, Hence the chase. That's mm. kind of just like where you my think brain it's really went. a Jedi temple. I, I looked at it as like they maybe thought it was a Jedi temple, but it was really mm. just maybe like an old ship and that looked so decrepit and it was just buried. I don't know. I, I'm just That's curious. Fair. Could be they could they might be throwing us off, but I I believed him. <laughs> right, but I was I was like this kid's like eight years old. Am I really buying that this kid thinks that you know there's a Jedi temple there? And but maybe there is. I mean that'd be cool. But yeah, in an in a galaxy where is you know nine nine aby probably like they probably aren't really teaching about the jedi in school <laughs> like there's there's like I, Luke I, I don't know i think there. they are to some degree because he's reading his jedi comic books you know to some that's degree. true i feel like yeah they're probably reintegrating jedi lore back into you know the classroom to some and that's degree. why that's why whim is probably the one to say that because he's the one who actually has the interest in the jedi the other kids might be like oh, i don't even care about those <laughs> Right. So that skeleton crew comes out December 3rd. I'm still not sure what to make of this show, because if we just looked at it from a bird's eye view, it's we have this fun show for kids and families around the holidays. And that's it. And that's great. I love that idea. I think that there are a lot of people that could gravitate towards that. But then when you look at it more closely, and you're like, John Watts is the showrunner. Uh, Wow, who David Lowry, Daniels, Bryce Dallas Howard, Lee Isaac Chung, just like those are some of the directors. Obviously, John Watts is directing a couple episodes. That those are the directors that we have for this show. Like we're bringing in the big guns for this show, and I'm starting to wonder what what do we really have here? And I also I'm still on my prediction that Mando shows up in in the show um, at some point. So. I, I'm just wondering what really this is going to end up culminating in. Like how many people beyond the family dynamic do you bring in to watch this show? But also how, how I guess, gripping is it for kids? Like what is that look like? Because let's be honest here. I don't think that there are a ton of kids watching streaming shows and watching tv right now like i just i don't think that there are they're doing other things and i don't know how much family time is spent watching tv at this point i i'm just curious to say the least yeah that's that's a really good point um and i think you would be pretty in touch with that i mean you're a teacher so you're talking to kids all the time about this type of stuff so no one better to really speculate on this than you. Um, and I don't have, or maybe parents. Yeah. Um, I'll have to get a vibe. I'm, I'm, I'll have to get a vibe. I, I start school tomorrow. We're recording this Sunday, August 11th here comes out Monday, August 12th. Tomorrow's the first day of school. I will get a vibe this week for what the star Wars vibes are with my class, but also just what the, I guess, TV movie vibes. I, I like getting to know from them. What are they interested in? What is that, you know, age group interested in? It's just curious. It's always curious what, you know, I find, I, I think they would be interested in versus what they actually are. Yeah, it's really, it's kind of harken back to that point you made at the beginning of 
of this topic like it really is interesting that they brought out the, like the big guns like all these really accredited directors to do this show and it's like you know judging from the trailer it looked it looked fine looked solid but like what are we getting like this is really interesting like i'm kind of thrown off by it but not mm-hmm. in a bad way not a really mm-hmm. you know wholly bad way but it's just like it's really piqued my interest like mm-hmm. what is this thing <laughs> Well, we'll see what happens. I wasn't necessarily just astounded by what I saw, but I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'll, I'm looking forward to it. And as we get to know more and introduce more characters here in different trailers and marketing throughout the next few months, we'll get it more on board. We have one more trailer to discuss and then one more negative thing to discuss. But this one was an easy win. And I am still frustrated that they didn't release this to the public because this is now Star Wars Celebration and D23 that they have not released any sort of Andor season two anything. And to me, that is just kind of a mistake at this point uh, because you have so many opportunities to get the show out there for more people to, to see. And word of mouth has done Andor a lot of good. And showing something for this at D23 was the easiest layup win that they could get because so many people love this show and are growing to love this show, not to mention how critically acclaimed it is. But again, this whole, we're going to have to watch this on, you know, my phone because I downloaded that trailer. I'm going to watch recorded from phone, someone else's phone, which is recorded from someone else's <laughs> phone because I can't just go to YouTube and watch it. It, it makes no sense to me how that helps them in any way like i really i really don't understand that's again we're rehashing again but let's talk about this trailer i i loved it because i love andor but let me ask you this uh do you prefer just a straight teaser or do you like these type of trailers which was a a mix of behind the scenes talking with the actors and actresses from the show talking with tony gilroy and some footage from season two, or would you have preferred just straight season two? I think it's weird. Like years ago, I would have been on the other side of this answer, but right now I'm really landing on like what we got was really cool. And I think I, I liked it better because okay, something about knowing the people behind the scenes and like how they really feel about the project they're in. I don't know why, but like personally that really connects with me. Like seeing someone mm-hmm really enjoy acting in this show or really enjoy mm-hmm. directing this show i'm like you know what it buys me in a little bit more than than not like it even if the show maybe isn't as good as some other shows like knowing that these people enjoyed it it kind of it does wonders for me actually like, i enjoy watching a little bit more knowing these people had a good time so also we get it, sprinkled it in some really good vibe. shots yeah it definitely helps the vibes the vibes better. tremendously i would say that as it gets closer, I prefer just the straight give me the trailer. But this far out from the show, that's it's a good to point. have this. It's perfect to have this little balance. Yeah, and this early I, on, I, I think just, this is cool. Mm-hmm. And later on, I would like something more like in universe. Real. Right. And we will. We'll get that eventually. Probably yeah. like February is probably they'll drop like an official trailer for it. But we got a lot in this little teaser. I love hearing is all of these people talking about the show. And then, you know, Diego Luna did a little interview later where he talked about, you know, Cassie and having to learn about uh sacrif- more about sacrifice and meeting these people and being more confident in himself. I love hearing Diego Luna talk about Cassie and Andor and talk about the show and Rogue One. It gets me really excited. But I think this season will just absolutely smash everything in terms of expectation it is going to be incredible i think that andor is a groundbreaking show for star wars because it once again displayed how star wars can really be whatever it wants to be and for the most part and i don't think every show should be like andor i'm not one of those people but it is an absolutely wonderful show. Season two is going to raise the stakes. You can feel that in this just little short uh, sizzle reel that the Empire's oppression, you know, is really taking hold. That the characters are on edge in every moment. This whole spy uh, infiltration aspect is really big, and I think we're going to see 
just the rebe- the side of the rebellion we've really always wanted to see because now I think we're going to get into this and the rebellion is going to be full-fledged. Like we're going to be at Yavin at some point in this season. So the, the rebellion is going to be like full-fledged. Here we go. We're going to be getting some of those missions where Cassian's going to have to s- probably sacrifice more of his, uh, uh, you know, ethics and morality in order to to make these things happen and i i love the idea of us having just this limited time this 12 episodes to get that side of the rebellion we haven't really seen in any other form of star wars yeah this was a really exciting thing to watch um and it, you know kind of harkening back uh to the very first thing you said it is it is a little interesting that like the show that didn't get the views it wanted but was really critically acclaimed like why aren't we releasing this more publicly i just wanted to put that two cents in there but um it is it's, it looks really good uh what we did get and um like you said like this is what we've really always wanted um it's it's so mm-hmm. meaty with like you don't have to dance around the rebellion now um right. the empire was fully in force in you know this whole entire time period from 19 bpy to zero but the right. rebellion really only comes to hold like really full force when you're starting now like after 5 aby 5 bpy so like we're finally going to get some like you know no no punches pulled of like oh we can't have these cells interacting yet like no mm-hmm. we're all together we're united we can get a full like side versus side it's not like empire versus a bunch of different cells that can't coordinate and like can't do this mm-hmm. stuff like it's gonna, yeah, it's e coming together and really nature coming of the together. rebellions yeah. gonna start happening We'll start seeing, we're going to see the fallout of Saul Guerrero, I think, from this rebellion, like full-fledged. We've seen that happen in Rebels. I think we're going to get more of that here, and I think we're going to see him and Cassian get into it a little bit as well. I really am excited and terrified to see how Luthan dies, because I just think that he's definitely going to die, and it's going to be in some blaze of glory just epic moment and that's gonna absolutely just scars guards incredible so i think that's just gonna absolutely just knock our socks off but you know i want to see more of mon mothma uh and her going into the rebellion and getting on yavin and all of this stuff so i really can't wait to see critic as well like ben mendes oh man he's back being back is critic we're gonna see k2so again i'm what are your expectations like for this show? Because we have, you know, an arc and then we're jumping a year an arc and then we're jumping a year. So like every few episodes, we're jumping a whole year in these little sections of like three episodes. What are your expectations for a show like that? It's hard to say initially because I don't think we've had anything quite like that in mm-hmm. Star Wars. So um, in many different ways, many different ways. This show has broken the molds that Star Wars has kind of existed in. And I like that mm. it is the mold breaker. It's not the mold setter. Like not everything needs to be like this. So you had a good point there earlier like that. Um, the expectations for this are are kind of high because I think season one, I thought it was just amazing. I think a lot of other people did too. Um, so like the bar is set really high by season one. Um I want to see fully com- like completed arcs each time. Mm-hmm. I don't want there to be much left hanging. Obviously, there's going to be something overarching all four of these arcs of three mm-hmm. episodes. Um, so I don't. I I want it to feel like a real closed loop at the end with maybe one thing that propels us into the next one for the next year. Mm-hmm. So, well, I well I would say that with these arcs. They have to get to it. I think the thing that would make me upset would be if the show ends and characters like a Bix or a Luthan or some of the other uh, people from Ferrix that we've met, you know, some of these other characters, I, I would be more upset if for whatever reason their arcs feel not fully completed and there's more to, to dive into there because we don't see them again in Rogue One and we don't hear about them in any of these other rebellion shows or comics or books because you know they were made for this show and i don't think we're gonna get another rebellion type you know series or anything for a while so 
you know, it, I don't know if there's opportunities for them to really plug those characters anymore. And so I really hope that they tie a neat bow around each one. You know, I was talking with someone the other day who was saying how I, a little nervous if they can pull off this, you know, year jump in between episodes and you're covering that much time in one season. I would normally be really, you know, a little bit, you know, nervous about something like that if it wasn't Tony Gilroy in charge of this and exactly. him literally saying that, no, this needs to be uh, two uh, seasons. And so. And not five. <laughs> and not, and not five. Yes. So I think that makes me really confident that we're going to be just fine here. Uh, I would say a couple of things is Cyril Karn never has any idea of anything going on. Like there's like that one shot of the, like the TIE fighters flying up and he's just looking mouth agape, just, Oh, and it's, this dude never knows what's happening. It's like, that's your there. own team, dude. <laughs> he just never knows what's going on behind the eight ball eternally. <laughs> So, uh, moving on, is there anything else you have to say about Andor real quick? Um, it worked on me. It, uh, it's got me hyped for season two and I, I wish I could watch it tomorrow, you know, but I wish mm -hmm. we, what character are you looking things? forward to diving into most just based off of this teaser trailer and why? Um, I'm going to say Deidre because mm -hmm. She seems she seemed really interesting. You almost she's you formidable. Almost, you almost found yourself rooting for her in season one because she's kind of figuring out this mystery. You don't whoa. quite get there because whoa, she's a bad person. You're 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 almost rooting for Deidre, the one who's torturing individuals and working for the ISB. Rooting. I guess from the, the standpoint exactly. of like the, the other Imperial she's going up against is kind of a tool. But so you're saying you you're like a little bit better than competent. That. So you're telling me that you're going to root for the competent evil the competent mastermind villain. who enjoys uh, hurting others over the guy who's just kind of like stupidly hurting others. In a sense, yes. But also, like I said, you heard almost it here, guys. very you heard it I said here. almost very importantly, because you don't root for her to win this outcome. Like, Luke, I think she's the she's the most formidable opponent. I want her to be the one that gets right. beat. So it's Luke, um, Luke, you hear to hear guys that Luke was the only one, you know, upset. Uh, he's calling the Ferrix uh, protesters terrorists uh, because he is upset um, at them taking back uh, their city. Wow. Couldn't didn't I, think you're going to go there. I couldn't be further. I, I am, <laughs> I am, I am Brasso. <laughs> <laughs> Brasso. What a, I hate what a the freaking Brasso. legend. For me, it's Bix because I'm really curious how they tie in. You know, Cassian seemingly lost everything to some degree in Rogue One. And Bix is obviously a the most important person probably left in his life with his mother, you know, dying. And, you know, there's obviously a former, there's some love interest there. There's also trauma because, you know, in a lot of ways, Cassian is partially responsible for I think it's Tim that got, you know, killed by the Imperials and you have, you know, Bix feeling, you know, partially like responsible or sorry, Cassian has to be somewhat responsible for that. And Bix holding him responsible for that. But also Tim couldn't keep his, you know, damn mouth shut. So I really want to see how her and Cassian navigate their relationship, how she's recovering from this torture and what she ultimately ends up being for the rebellion. What's her role? Like, is she too extreme? Is she someone that falls in line with the rebellion? Does she maybe go the Saul Guerrero route? Like, I'm really curious to see uh, where she fits into all of this because I love the political scheming. I love the, the spy nature. I want to see Cassian dressed up in different ways, infiltrating it like a through force infiltrating through his charm. Like there's just so many elements to Cassian and the rebellion. I really want to see played out in this show. Yeah. AG Arjona is killing this role as Bix. She's, great and i think there there could be something interesting there if she joins the partisans um because we did see benthic two tubes there uh saul's right hand man so um 
Yeah, I th- it could be interesting that if she kind of goes the more extremist route and joins up. Um, not saying that I mm-hmm. predict that she will, but there could be something there. It'd be interesting to kind of grapple with, the, you know, Cassian and her are both trying to be in the rebellion, mm-hmm. but yes, different sides on it. Yes. Quick question for you. Did you, I forgot about one other trailer. Do you know what trailer I speak of? Rebuild the galaxy. <laughs> we have to talk about it for a moment, right? Just real quick. Of course, like, yeah. Darth Jar Jar, Darth Kit Fisto, Darth Nubs. We have Ewok Darth Bounty. Rose Tico. Darth Rose Tico. We have Dark Ray. <laughs> there was the Ewok Bounty Hunters. The Admiral Akbar clone army. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> you know, that was that was hilarious. What uh, are, are you excited for some rebuild the galaxy? I think this is going to be just really funny. Like it's really fun. Or Mark Hamill yeah. voicing Luke and He's basically Luke. And Luke's just like this. He's giving off uh, really just hoboish uh, vibes, I guess, of just sitting back and. He's like kind of a bum. Alternate reality Luke. Like he's still playing Luke, but it's like not from the main timeline. So it's I think this is going to be really just fun. Um, You don't have to take it. too. You can't take it too seriously. It's just going to be a fun little probably 45 minute special. And you're going to get all these crazy wacky Mac mashups of like what, you know, like turning things on their head, like rebellion ATATs. It's going to be wild insane the shot with like jim grievous and yoda walking out together in prison like Marquina Marquina five, five <laughs> prison uniforms prisoner uniforms yeah this and mace windu gets the reversal of his line he's like this party's just begun <laughs> instead of <laughs> this party's over right i would say that what would be something you would add to uh to that universe if to that sh- little sh- special if you could throw something in oh gosh you know what i would do i would put emperor palpatine as like some crazy just like he's a cook he's just he's got like, like a, a normal he's job like a wannabe cook. <laughs> i would have he's uh, working in dex's diner he's working in dex's <laughs> diner and it's like next i need some java juice yes yes right away sir <laughs> Oh, that would be funny. What about if uh, Sebulba was like Anakin's master is like a Jedi, like Sebulba's this Jedi. <laughs> that t- reverse the relationship. They hate each other. Now they love each other. They're like oh. best friends. And yeah. uh, Obi-Wan's like, uh, oh, what would Obi-Wan be in this universe? Some sort of uh, he'd, he'd be, be a pirate. pirate. He hates flying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is why I love flying. Like, yeah, you know, something like that. <laughs> I love it when he does that. <laughs> he just sees Anakin. Just, oh, I love it when that kid does that. I wish that kid were my apprentice. <laughs> oh, my goodness. OK, so I we have to talk. This kind of gets us to it. I was really surprised moving on now to animation and the lack thereof of new animation news. I was really surprised that they revealed absolutely nothing in the animation department. It was very much, and I understand, it was like a celebration of the Bad Batch and this whole clone arc coming to an end. And I respect that from the standpoint of like, we should take time. We sometimes move to the next thing a little bit too quickly in in society, especially in like entertainment mediums. You know, the Olympics just finished and, you know, we're already like, let's move. We got 2028 Olympics. Let's let's go. And it's, we just watched this incredible, you know, couple of weeks of, you know, sporting just greatness and the bad badge ends and we're ready for the next animated show. So I understand taking time to reflect and celebrate. They even did some of that for like rebels and talking about like, was it like six years since Kanan's death or something like that. And that yeah. that's still just absolutely yeah. ringing true for most fans and being this really impactful moment. However, it just feels like a really odd to not even hint at like the next animated show in development i mean when bad batch was announced it was a couple years or whatever a year and a half before the bad batch came out i think like it was a while it wasn't because they did they announced clone wars and then the clone war season seven happens and then like after that was like this whole bad batch thing after that so i i'm curious 
why you think they chose not to because they definitely have ideas they're definitely working on something and also no tales of the jedi season two talk either which i thought was interesting so obviously tales of the jedi is something they can drop you know here's a trailer for tales of the jedi or they could even just do like a tales of the empire like this comes out in three weeks like it doesn't have to be that big but i would have thought we'd have heard something about that or the what the next big animated show is that to me is the biggest surprise of the weekend a really quick comment on young jedi adventure season two i believe that comes out so this is august 11th today i believe that comes out like on wednesday so like i think they're just, it's you know dropping soon enough that they're like eh. <laughs> well we we are but we already knew that was coming out we already knew right. that and so, that's not that's yeah. not like the lucasfilm animation it's not flagship show the flagship. for the next yeah. year like that's just you know it's there yeah so it, it it made sense that there wasn't anything about that um i was pretty surprised that there was just no hint at anything i understand maybe not releasing you know, stills or a trailer or something for the next right. thing. I would have thought maybe it'd be like, get ready. Here's your logo for the next show. Here's your, something. here's what the mm -hmm. next one is. So um, just even saying what it's about, like, that's all I was expecting. I wouldn't even expecting yeah, this big trailer, exactly. but like you said, like just, mm -hmm. just crumbs. I was, I just wanted maybe some crumbs and we didn't really even get that. It was yeah, like nothing. <laughs> nothing. Bread so feed my family. Sometimes I feel a little entitled being like, where's my stuff? But like, you know, Lucasfilm I am paying. animation Lucasfilm came out like, like Lucasfilm animation came out like Unkar plot and said, hmm, this panel will be worth one quarter, quarter portion. portion. <laughs> like that's what it, and you're just looking at my really, really, that, that's what that was. But, you know, I'm like, again, I'm all about reflecting, but it's just weird that Bad Batch finished up when? When did Bad Batch finish? Like early I was to think May? That. Yeah. Uh, what? Right? It might have been earlier because, you know, May the 4th, like we got late Tales of the Empire. So late April. April. So like late April, early May, something like that. It was like the last, it was either like that last Wednesday in April, or the first one in May, something like that. And, you know, we're sitting here a few months removed from that. And we all knew that was the last season. And we we know they're working on something. So it was just odd that we didn't, like you said, get a little little bit of something. Obviously, they have plenty of time. And I guess animation is not one where it has to be this grand reveal of anything. They can drop that in kind of whenever they want. Um, but, you know, we continue to play the guessing game when it comes to the future of Star Wars animation. So I would say that our podcast on the future of Star Wars animation, which we did a couple of weeks ago, still rings true. You can go watch that or listen to it on Apple and Spotify. To Nothing has find, been retconned. Um, all of the things that we predict will be the next show, even though it wasn't released this last weekend. I still think that all of what we said holds true for whenever they decide to announce anything i will now ask you one final question luke if you are ready for this outside of star wars something non-star wars related what was your thing you enjoyed most from d23's expo this weekend that you're looking forward to well oddly enough you did mention it um i have really enjoyed the incredibles so incredibles 3 is going to be pretty cool um i know that might be a hot take for my choice but like I really enjoyed those so their movies. I think they're really cool. So I will probably be making our way to the theaters to see that one whenever we get that drop. So mm -hmm. I like that. What's yours? Avatar 3, like not even close. It's Avatar 3. I just, I love oh, those movies. Love and those this one's going to be really cool. And the the concept art for the fire tribe, like fire people, they fire look Nash. literally straight out of horror film or something because they like the ash on their faces and the masks and the fire around them and hearing James Cameron talk about the fire tribe, hearing him talk about what what's at stake and how, yes, we're going to have this visually incredible story now, but we're really just going to dive deep into the characters now because we've, you know, established this beautiful, you know, world to your eye. But now we're going to say, Hey, this is going to be like, a thick story for our characters and i i love avatar so i'm really excited about that but i am also like i want to talk about moana too 
I love Moana yeah. and that comes out in just a couple of months. So I'm really excited to see. I really hope that it's really good. Like I really hope that it's, it's a lot of fun, but I do uh, too. So we'll see. There's a lot of, you know, fun stuff coming out uh, in the future months as well. Everyone, thank you for watching and or listening here on YouTube, Apple, or Spotify. Again, it's Monday, August 12th. By the time you are listening to this, uh, send good vibes my way as I am excitedly going back into the lion's den for another year of school, brand new school. Moved all my stuff in today. It's a mess. I have no working technology yet, but it's going to be good. I'm, I'm excited. Starting a new chapter going to be fun make sure you check out the star wars timeline show that luke and i do every single saturday uh we'll be in young giant adventures for a few more weeks before we move on to a few of the books from high republic we're in the year 232 bby right now so we're just camping out there for a few more months uh luke anything else before we get going here you hit the timeline show and I just think that's such a world of fun to make those videos. And I think they'd be fun to watch. So, mm -hmm. Hey, you can't plug it enough. I love it. <laughs> Check us out. Apple or Spotify at star Wars news net. We will see you Thursday for the star Wars news net live show, 10 o'clock Eastern time, where I'm sure we'll talk about more D 23, get into depth on some of the interviews that came out of D 23 and make some predictions for the future of star Wars. For everyone, thank you for listening for Light and Life. And remember that we are all the Republic. <laughs>